Welcome again. My name is Alyssa, and I am very happy to be presenting teaching books for teachers with you today. I'm joined by my colleague, Kim. Kim, would you like to say hello? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we are, like I said, we're going to be talking about resources to support you so that you know Teaching Books is an ever-expanding collection of over 239 digital resources to support the books that you are reading. Let me go ahead and stop my video here. And before I dive in too far, I just want to get started with a resource from Teaching Books. So what I'm going to go to is pop over to our website and I'm going to search for a title, ah, excuse me. I've been thinking about recently. And we're going to listen to the Meet the Author recording for Song for a Whale. Hi, this is Lynn Kelly and I'm the author of Song for a Whale. I'm going to tell you a bit about how I came to write this book and then I'll share an excerpt with you. I learned about the 52 Hertz whale who sings at a frequency other whales don't understand. Most whales sing at a frequency of about 10 to 20 Hertz. And this whale sings at a frequency that's too high for other whales, about 52 Hertz. For humans, it's still a low sound, but it's too high for a whale. He's been out there that we know of for at least 30 years, singing the song that only he sings with no response from any other animal. I was fascinated right away with him and then couldn't stop thinking about him and decide to write about him. And then I decided I needed to come up with a character who would be just as fascinated with this whale as I was and who would feel compelled to get up and do something to reach out to this whale and let him know that someone hears him. And that's when I came up with the character of Iris. Like many deaf people I've met in my work as a sign language interpreter, she's the only deaf student at her school. So there really isn't anyone she can talk to at school and things aren't so great at home either. So when she learns about this whale in her science class, she decides that she needs to do something to find him. And now I'm going to pause us there. I definitely recommend you listen to the rest. Uh, she's a lovely reader. Uh, I wanted to start with this because it's a wonderful demonstration of what you might find on teaching books. These are original resources created by teaching books and they are recordings as you can see with the author and, and or illustrator. What I love about these is I'm always listening for something that I can take away from the recording and use in a creative way, whether to spark an activity, a lesson or a conversation. In this case, I'm thinking, wouldn't this be great to assign to students to pick an interesting story about an animal an animal maybe that's unique to the other animals that are like them. They have to do some research about it and maybe write their own story. This is a great opportunity also for uh, teachers who are in the room to reach out to your librarians and for librarians to connect with your teachers, to kind of bring those, those research opportunities together. I also think this can be a great way to just have a social emotional learning conversation about communication or reaching out to others. You might also say, okay, now in addition to all these wonderful things, we can supplement a science lesson on sound waves or marine life. So really with just this one little two minute and 55 second recording, you can pull so much out of it. And what's great is that the author themselves can get that lesson started for you and just play their voice and play that for your students. We're gonna talk about how to get this directly to your students more later, but before I go away from this page, what I wanna show you is this red share arrow right underneath the book cover. That's going to come up a lot for us because what you find on here are many tools to get you this resource directly to your students, your colleagues, your families, whomever you'd like to share it with in whatever way best meets your needs. I'm gonna pause now and we're gonna go back to our agenda. Today, we are talking about gaining familiarity with top teaching books features that teachers find useful for in-class instruction, as well as guiding student-paced learning. 
discovering ready to use lessons and activities and engaging resources that book trailers and other contactless book previewing tools and more. So we're gonna start by looking at finding resources for your books and then we'll move into some virtual teaching ideas. And we wanna be really clear that while it says virtual teaching ideas, this is great, not just for classroom teachers, but also for our librarian educators as well. There are so many things that you can pull out of this. So we're excited to share that with you. And as a quick reminder, all Indiana residents have access. So when we say share this with your families, we really mean it. And this is true for all of your schools and your family members, whomever. Uh, there are great ways if you have questions, you can reach out to your Inspire librarians. This is provided by the Indiana State Library's Inspire project. And your access uh, has information for, if you go to teachingbooks.net slash inspire, we encourage you to log in as an educator using your school email address. The username and password might be different depending on where you are, uh, but just know that this will work for you as well. All right, Kim, is there anything I missed about login before we move on to the next piece? No, I don't think so. I think that just making sure that we talk a little bit more about being logged in as an, as an professional or as an educator when we get there, but absolutely, that's great, thank you. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. And I just note too, while we're on the website, how I know that I'm logged in as an educator is because it's greeting me by name in the top left corner. It says, welcome, Alyssa. And if I open my toggle menu, which is this three lines in the top left also, and I scroll down, I'm signed in as Alyssa. If above the sign out button, you see a link to educator login, that just means you're not yet logged in as an educator and you need to go ahead and click on that and sign in with your work email. So thanks again, Kim, for asking for that. Um, but now I'm actually gonna hand it off to Kim and ask her to share us about how to find resources for our books. I think that's a great tool too, because if we were only signed in at the at your district level, then you would see what our, our students see because we don't collect student data. So they have an anonymous type of access. The tools we're going to use today, you want that educator login for. But let's start with searching for a particular title. And um, we have resources pre-K through 12, like Alyssa said, for titles pre-K through 12. But I'm gonna choose uh, one of our Indiana read-alouds today, The Day You Begin. And if I start typing that right into my search bar, that title will come up for me. I can select that. And we have all sorts of ways to start using that book with our readers. And I see this collection, there are 54 resources for this title. Uh, by Jacqueline Woodson and Rafael Lopez and the, just a huge collection of resources and it's ever growing. I want to choose today a way to preview and build excitement. So I'm gonna choose the video book trailer. And so let's take a look at that video book trailer. And let's go ahead and listen to, let's go ahead and listen to it, it's delightful. There will be times when you walk into a room and no one there is quite like you. When the world feels like a place that you're standing all the way outside of. Until the day you begin to share your stories. And all at once, in the room where no one else is quite like you, the world opens itself up a little wider to make some space for you. This is the day you begin. Thanks, Alyssa. That sharing tool right there that we Alyssa talked to about earlier allows us now to do so many things. We, no one who receives this when you use the sharing tool, receives this uh, video book trailer, they do not have to know anything about teaching books. They get this resource and they have immediate access. So you're breaking down all of those barriers. But I can use, I can copy that URL. I could put that in a newsletter that I sent home to my families, put it in an email to families so that they feel connected and know some of the, the ideas that are being shared in class. I have that ability. I have the ability um, to create a shelf talker. We've had educators tell us that at maybe a back to school night or parent teacher conference night, they've had all of their um, students choose a book and a, and 
they've created something like a book trailer, they've popped them on their desks or put that so that families then can scan that QR code. And if you have a phone with you right now and you scan that QR code, you'll see how the access, you go right into that resource. Access is immediately granted. So all sorts of ways to be able to share resources in different ways with families. So both um, printables and on digital platforms, and then that URL that you can pop into your learning management systems too. Let's go ahead and go back up to the search bar and let's search for another title. So this one is from your wonderful list title set in Indiana, SALT, a, and a story of French. So we might want to go ahead, it's down a little, uh, let's go ahead and put the colon in. Yeah, there you go. Um, this is one of your Indiana authors, Helen Frost. And we can't immerse in the backstory with our author. So if I listen to this Meet the Author recording by Helen Frost, then what we're going to see, and I'm gonna go ahead and show one more thing, Alyssa. So before you start playing it, let's go ahead and scroll up because I didn't on the last resource show that we could translate. Um, the this. So if I want to translate the text, I can go up in the upper right hand corner and select a language. Our author or illustrator will still speak to us in English, but the text will be translated and then that can be helpful for, for both students and families as well. And so that's how how that tool works. But if I start this conversation now, um, we can immerse ourselves in the backstory and the beauty of Helen's words. And I wanna go ahead and listen to a section of this right up to the part and just a little bit of, the, um, of when she reads from the book. Hi, this is Helen Frost. I'm the author of Salt, a story of friendship in a time of war. I'm going to tell you a bit about how I came to write this book and then I'll read an excerpt to you. Salt is set in Fort Wayne, Indiana in the late summer of 1812. When I moved to Fort Wayne about 20 years ago, I learned that this place has always been important because of the three rivers that meet here. I began to do some research in the library, finding history books and maps and photographs that helped me begin to learn about the history of the city. Many histories are told from the single point of view of those who came to America from other places. When readers see words like settlers and frontier, they might not pause to consider that what was a frontier to some was a homeland to others. Salt encourages people to think about that. This place where three rivers meet is home to the Miami or Miamia people. The longer I live here, the more I learn about that deeper history. The more I found out about the events of 1812 and the events before and after them, the harder it was to write the book. I was often tempted to step back and not include the harshest parts, or not to write this story at all. But I always came back to the belief that the only thing worse than telling the story would be not to tell it. It's important to know the truth about the past. I learned about the events of 1812 from an adult point of view, and then imagined how it would have been for children growing up in that situation. The book alternates between two voices. Aniqua, a Miamia boy, and James, the son of a trader. I know from my research that there were children of traders who learned the Miamia language, and I know that learning a language can include embarrassing mistakes. In this poem, James and Aniqua have an encounter based on such a misunderstanding, and then after sorting it out and laughing about it together, they see something that surprises them both. This poem is from Aniqua's point of view, beginning with James greeting Aniqua with the word Aya, a Miamia greeting. Aya, James calls out as he climbs down from the tree. He saw me before I had a chance to trick him into thinking I'm a crow, but I make a crow call on my whistle anyway, and then I show him how to do it. Looks like he's come out to try to snare some rabbits. I point to a pile of rabbit droppings in the middle of the trail. Wapanzwa, I say, and he repeats, Wapanzwa, smiling because he's learned another word. But then, not far down the trail, he points to raccoon droppings and says, Wapanzwa. Now that's funny. I put my hands on my head to look like rabbit ears and say again, Wapanzwa. James grins, oh, you mean rabbit. 
he hops down the trail to show he knows what wapan means. We start laughing. Then we look up, and there's a man I've never seen before standing in the shadow of a tree watching us. Thanks, Alyssa. So just like Alyssa said, how many different ways we can use to talk about the importance of history, the importance of research, um, the beauty of words when we say home when we hear homeland, when we hear um, frontier, what does that really mean? And just uh, providing some deep conversation starters. And then we have the wonderful gift of having our author read to us. So another fluency model. So these book recordings allow us fluency models all over the place, right? Let's go ahead and search for a, a high school title, Alyssa, uh, with the fire on high. And that's a second, you know, from the secondary 20, it's from your Elliott Rosewater Award. And so we have the ability to, we have almost 3,000 audio name pronunciations. And so we can hear our author pronounce our, their names and make sure, just like we read and talk to each other and we make sure that we say our students' names correctly, we want to make sure that we honor our authors and illustrators in that same way. And that's what students want too. So let's listen to just a brief little, just a little snippet of that. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Acevedo. And I want to talk a little bit about my name. I grew up in schools where there were a lot of Elizabeths in the classroom, and so everyone had to go by last letter to distinguish themselves. And that's probably why I didn't like my name for a very long time. It felt too common. I was too used to being Liz A or Elizabeth A or, or whatever it is, don't call me Beth. <laughs> I love that. And so here, when we use our sharing tool with uh, audio name pronunciation, now if we can use this, if we want a label sheet, we can have in all of the titles by this author, we can have her name come up so that our, our readers know how to pronounce this author's name. We, so that's another, or we can have that same shelf talker right on a shelf, being able to have our author provide that on a shelf. So a great resource, a great tool. We also have, and if, um, Alyssa, if you can start the book reading, book recording at like a minute 40. So we can use, again, all these Meet the Author recordings are so incredibly rich. So we'll go back. Oops, sorry. Oh, that's okay. And then now we want to go to the Meet the Author recording and we'll start it, yeah, a little further in. Of course, you know, we I'm would gather so much from all of it. I'm sorry, Kim. <laughs> okay, we'll gather so much from all of it, but let's go ahead and start here. Okay. To that question. The most challenging part of writing with the fire on high had to be that I was writing outside of my comfort zone and had to become very proximate to the things that I was writing about. The novel was based in Philadelphia, which although I have spent time there, that's the area where my husband is from. I taught there one summer. It is not the same as being from a place. I'm not Afro-Puerto Rican. I'm not a parent. And here I am writing this character who in many ways was really stretching me to consider, you know, how do I learn everything I need to learn to accurately portray this character? And if it's a young Puerto Rican kid or someone from Philadelphia reads this story, are they going to feel like I represented what they believe in or who they are or a reflection of them in a way that was kind and tender and thoughtful? And so I think it was important for me to put up these kind of fictional readers in my head and constantly challenge myself to consider the places where you are not as knowledgeable. How are you covering that gap? So again, Alyssa, can you go ahead and select the title again so we can go back to that title page? So all the different ways we can use this, right? Do we want to have resources that talk about character development or the writing process or research? So these resources that support your instruction and your lesson, that was you know a few minutes long. But if I want to use now, I can share any of these, but I also now can 
collect, I can create a list. And so anywhere that you see that red plus sign that is underneath the top the cover, you can start a, a list, a custom list for yourself. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll add this title to list. So this is going to be a new list for me. I'm going to check that it's not going to be added to any of my others. And it's this one is what let's do character development. And so this one is going to be that and I am not going to add it to any of my other lists. It's going to be new and now that's going to start my list. So I have right now a list of one, of course. But if I want to view this list now, I can see that these are resources when I am going back from my instructional purpose of thinking about character development, I even can scroll down just a little bit more under that title and I can add a note. So I can remind myself that I wanted to use that meet the author recording and I even might say that I want to start at a certain location. That's up to you, but you've got 100 characters to make a note for yourself. Be sure to save it. And then this is, it can be, it can start your lesson like a bell ringer. It can be a, you know, think, pause and reflect about something or a partner piece, but something for just a couple of minutes that does not redefine or cause you to have to rewrite a lesson plan, but just adds another dimension to it. You have the author right in your, in your class or in your library sharing backstory for the story. So thank you. And then remember that once I have more titles on this list, my sharing tool is right underneath too. And once I have multiple titles on here, when I share a list, the recipient of that list gets all of the resources for all the titles on the list. Thanks so much, Kim. I also wanna take a moment before I talk more about reading lists, just to go back to our sharing tool and highlight some of our digital resources as well. Because while we have these wonderful printable uh, QR codes, et cetera. You also can see that you can add this directly onto your digital platforms. If you use Google Classroom, it means that you can assign a resource directly into Google Classroom. You can also grab the sharing URL or embedding it and put it onto any of your learning management systems in whatever way best meets your needs. So there are really a number of ways to easily integrate this in which is important, especially right now when we're thinking about how to reach students, whether they are in person with us or at home. And if we're doing those asynchronously or at the same time, that this will really help to support that. So we just talked about how to add a title to a reading list. Now I wanna spend a little more time on reading lists because this is a great way, as Kim said, to gather all of our resources into one place, whether that is to gather the resources for a particular unit, or maybe you want to put everything together for a curriculum. If you're in the library and would like to support your teachers by saying, I see your syllabus has these titles. Well, here, I'm sending you a link with exactly those titles. You get to be a hero for the day, right? And we can really help support each other by gathering what we need into easy little collections. So Kim showed us how to add a title by grabbing that red plus sign underneath any book cover. What's gonna be important, there's a number of other ways, but I also wanna show you where you find your reading list. If we go back to our toggle menu, and that's the top left corner here, I'm gonna scroll down and I'll find your reading list. Here, you see we have a collection of Indiana State lists and then we also have any custom reading list that you've created. So your leading reading list is where those reading lists will be. And you can obviously use the red create a new list button at the top to start fresh, or you can go into any of your existing lists and edit them and then add titles in that way as well. Now, maybe you don't have a particular list in mind, but you'd like to create some collections based on what you're finding on teaching books. Maybe you're looking for resources to support a curricular area, like I wanna do a unit on STEAM, so I'll search STEAM, and then I see we have a whole STEAM collection here under our featured section. So I'm gonna to go to that. And we have 3,500 books, which is a lot. So I'm gonna filter because I don't necessarily need a book list quite that large. And where I filter is on the left-hand side. 
So let's say I'd like to have STEAM titles for first to fifth grade. And I would like them to all have meet the author recordings. So I'm going to under resource type, I'll select meet the author recordings. And now I have 43 titles. So you can continue to filter down or I can just start from here. And what I can do is I can either select these titles individually or I can select this add multiple titles to a reading list, which is a button right above the book covers on the right side. And what that will do is it will grab all of the titles on this first page and I can either choose all of them or I can select from them individually. And then you can add it to a list. And just like Kim shows, you can create that list new or you can add it to an existing list. So that's one way that you can kind of grab those quick reading lists. Another thing you can do is maybe you can search for lists that already exist. Say for instance, you wanted some ideas for summer reading. Then I'm going to search summer reading and I finally have summer reading programs. Or I can see a number of existing lists here like the CSLP. Let's look at our list results. And you can see we have so many to choose from that we can start to explore from. Tales and Tales was just recently released, so I'll look at this one for young adults. We have our 2021, and I can create this as my own. If I just duplicate this list, I can make it my own and then cater it to my needs, or I can just use it just directly like this. So know that you can search for lists as well. And as always, you can share. Remember, always look for that red share arrow. Sometimes it's in slightly different places, but it is always available so that you can get these resources directly to your students. And summer reading lists are a great one to share with families as well. You might have seen also we have those Indiana lists. Know that you can always just search for the word Indiana and then you will find those lists. Kim mentioned that we have a list of titles set in Indiana and here it is. So this is a great one to explore and see what you can find there. Maybe you want to supplement a curriculum. If you have an existing pre-written curricula that you're using in your district, this can be a great way to find additional resources to support that. If, for instance, that curricula involves social justice, you want to add some, some more flavor to it, something that's more I mean, yours or what you ever what you want to add to it, we just search for the subject. And I might say, oh, look, there's this great awards and distinction. I would really like to see some authoritative titles that meet this criteria. So I'm going to look at this award list. And now I can, again, use the filters or I can just choose from what I'm seeing. And what I might find is something like the day you begin and then we can find the book trailer and you can find a way to add that book trailer into those pre written curricula. So there's a number of ways to think about these reading lists, whether it is using the ones that already exist on the site or creating your own. You can create lists that support existing curriculum or you can maybe make a list directly for a particular student or for your particular collection, whatever it is. There's really so many ways to get this to meet your direct needs. Kim, is there anything I'm missing while we talk about reading lists? Um, nothing. Other, well, one thing that I wanted to just showcase too was just our, uh, how spectacular our content department is. So you've created these lists. Our content department is constantly adding resources. So let's say that you have, you created your list and we add other resources because those resources are attached to the titles. You don't have to worry about your list being updated. So you would have to add a new book if a new book was added, you know, for by an author or something if you were doing an author study list. But if you if we add resources for a title that you have a list of, that resource will go right in as it will to anybody that you've shared that list with. So we, just a great way to know that your lists are going to constantly be updated with new resources. Perfect. Thanks so much, Kim. I'm also just going to lightly touch here on, you see this button for the list analysis report. 
this is something to explore on your own if you if you're interested in this but i do believe it's a powerful tool it's a great way to just kind of see a breakdown of what is in a list your list whatever the list is but to look at that breakdown uh, and see how that might impact whether you add new titles remove titles whatever best uh, meets what you're looking for it will show you what is represented what might not be represented and then if we keep going you'll see also quantitative and qualitative measures of text complexity available to consider so just know that that uh, list analysis tool is available on your lists. Okay, and we're going to pause really quickly. We've shared a lot about how to find resources for your books. Are there any things that we can show again? Or is there any particular ideas that you're looking for right now? Feel free to pop it into the chat if you have a question. We'll wait just a second for you. Alyssa, do you want to go ahead and go back to the home, the home page? Sure. We'll get ready for our next section. Okay, I don't see anything yet, but I think one thing that is- Sorry, we do have one thing really quickly. Um, are we going to share the slide deck and agenda? We certainly can, yeah, thanks for that question. We will uh, share that out and we have a certificate as well that we'll be sharing the link with as soon as we're done. Oh, thank you so much. I looked away for one second and then they the <laughs> popped right in. <laughs> okay, so yes, we're going to now go into a new section that's called for educators. And sometimes right now we don't see it on the screen, but depending on how large your screen is, this the, our screens are really, uh, it's responsive, the site is responsive. So if you made it larger, thanks Alyssa, you would see the for educators on the right hand side in the top. If you don't see it, like you're on your phone or the screen is smaller, you're gonna find that under the toggle menu. So it will still be there. And for educators, I, Alyssa says it's your home base and I love that that phrase because it is your home base it's going to give you so many different components that we we will not have time to explore all of those today but i just want to give you an overview of it so we have uh, under literacy and standards connections we have standards based support there and we have different tools that you can use Alyssa talked quickly about um, the book lists and collection and now at analyzing lists. So all those different kinds of list making tools are available. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper in just a moment on virtual teaching ideas. We also have a section that is our diverse books toolkit. And that allows us to find culturally relevant titles that um, let's go ahead and open that up, Alyssa. Thanks. That allows us to take a look if we're looking to find diverse books by culture or subject, or if we want to do an expanded search. It also allows us to take a look at interviews with diverse authors and illustrators, um, find those award lists. There are some beautiful cultural representation activities that are there to allow us to think deeply about what the titles we're using. And then there is also that collection analysis. So, so more pieces that we can dig into um, at another time at your request to just expand, you know, there's so much here. So let's go ahead and go back up to the top and go back to for educators and we'll take a look then the other part there's more professional exploration for you some library programming pieces about you know like just showcasing different titles and then different ways to promote books both in your classrooms in your libraries and with your readers both within newsletters in your in your spaces all different sorts of ways so any of these in themselves can be an hour presentation so don't hesitate because with your license to teaching books through the indiana state library you have full access to us so never hesitate and we'll talk more too about um, help and support but we're here for you thanks kim um now before i go into virtual teaching ideas i want to pause acknowledge that this is a lot of information and just say if if two major things stick in your mind for later, it is explore for educators and use the search bar to search for your titles and your lists. Those are two big things that you can do and hopefully everything else is pretty self-explanatory as you explore. Now, we're gonna look into some specific virtual teaching ideas. 
And what's great about this is this is going to be really helpful for applying ideas directly into the classroom or the library or to send things home with families right now, especially while families are looking for ways to balance out screen time directly engaged with classroom time, but also having to support students and kind of filling the other time that is available to them in the school day. So this is really something that can be used for everybody. What you can find in virtual teaching ideas are ready to use ideas and resources. Getting started, this is a good place to look and it will just direct you to big collections that you can then think about and use however you wish. I want to spend some time focusing on more specific resources within this category. What you will notice under elementary, intermediate, or secondary are what we call the Bitmoji libraries, classrooms, and virtual bulletin boards. Right now, this is something that I know is very popular and yet sometimes can feel a little overwhelming on where to start because there are so many options. So what we've done is create an example for you so that you can see kind of where you might want to get started, or you can just use it as it is and edit the samples within. And that example looks like this Google document, which is a slide deck, and it provides under each slide resource, uh, quick ideas for how to add into the slide deck. And you'll see things like this very full, lovely uh, virtual classroom, or I'm sorry, library. You might also find virtual classrooms and everything on here for the most part is clickable. So it's a great way to encourage independent exploration. And maybe they will find on our art classroom, if you click on a title, then it can go to a resource. The important thing to know is that when you create a copy of this for yourself, you can then change these to whatever best meets your needs. So if you wanna do a focus on all Illustrator meet the author recordings, you can find whichever ones work, copy the book cover directly from teaching books, and then paste in that sharing link that we showed you how to find and connect it to the images. So if you wanna go as far as doing the virtual uh, Bitmoji classrooms, this is great for using that. Or if this feels like a little bit much, but sometimes it can be, you can also find more pared down examples like this very simple slide deck. What we've seen people do, which is so fun, is students will grab book covers of titles they read for independent reading, and then they'll type in examples or um, their own book talk or their own recommendation, and then they'll create classroom book recommendations for summer reads or for whatever it is. And so it's a great way to engage students in these virtual spaces as well. So use this as a way to get some quick ideas, create your own, whatever. And that is something you can find under virtual teaching ideas. It's linked under elementary, intermediate, and secondary, and it's called Bitmoji Libraries, Classrooms, and Virtual Bulletin Boards. Another one I wanna show you which is available for pre-K through eight is our monthly timely topics. Each month we are going to share and update this page. So it's gonna give you a really wonderful quick sample of some ideas that are ready to go. What's wonderful about this is it's great for those days of, oh no, I need a last minute plan or, oh no, I'm subbing in a class that maybe I wasn't as prepared for, um, or I didn't know that I was going to have to be subbing for. Whatever it is, you can grab these and use them to, they're just ready for you to use. It's also a good way to say, okay, how do I help share with my colleagues uh, how they might use teaching books? This clearly lays out some wonderful ways to use the books and the resources available on them to then instruct and, and engage with your readers. So you'll find quick ideas like that on timely topics. Now, those two things and our ready to use activities, which are just as exactly as they sound like, they're activities that are ready for you to use. These are great for those back pocket ideas. When other things that you might be thinking about with virtual teaching ideas are family engagement. 
like I said, this is a great place to come and find things to just send directly home. And one thing I like to share is this picture book activity kits link. Here you're going to get quick, ready to use activity kits. And while they are using picture books, they are great for all ages. You're gonna get a little annotation for it, a link to the resource, and also some connected activities that you can use with the whole family or whatever group that you would like. And those are our virtual teaching ideas, ready to use activities, picture book activity kits. Melissa, can you go into the authors inspire us section at the top? Absolutely. One thing is, and it, you know, everybody is in different places all over the country, but one thing that people have told us that they like to do during staff meetings when they're trying to support letting people know about, did you know about this resource or wanting to share with their teams? Some of these, if we, if we open one up, let's just choose um, authors, the, yeah, any one of them. So we have an activity we give you what is used in case you're using it with readers and the key is there too but even having this sometimes people will print a couple out leave them on tables at a staff meeting or now if they're virtual having this ready to you know write up on a screen that your the participants can share a piece of it so they come in they scan they get to have a discussion starter and you get to say and you have access to this resource from the indian state library and so just something that allows you also with with your readers and or with your colleagues to show them some of the tools and think about ways that they might want to use them so all sorts of ideas for students and for your colleagues thanks kim so we were talking about using the ready to use activities to send with families. Another great way to engage with families is actually available on our blog. So where I'm gonna take us now is to our blog. And I encourage you to spend more time in virtual teaching ideas, but I trust that you will find all the things you need on your own. Right now I'm gonna just type in blog and under featured you'll see we have the teaching books blog. So we're gonna go there. And here are a number of different types of posts that you can explore in whatever way uh, most intrigues you. We add new ideas all the time, but also these virtual book tours are a great way to engage with families or just to use as your own instructional support. Because what you find on them, if we open up this one, is these are all recently published titles, so very exciting. And then you can get resources directly from the author where you can see an inside spread and then you can listen to the author talk about the book just like we did with the meet the author recordings you also get these wonderful invitations to imagine and this is my favorite part about these because this is a great thing to say it's just a ready to go little activity it's a ready to use as a bell ringer as the main course if you will or to say families explore the virtual book tours you know, play with your students in whatever way, with whatever titles they find interesting. And they're nice because it doesn't require that you have the book to read it. While, of course, having the book is always wonderful, this is something that definitely can exist on its own as well. While we're on the blog, I also want to make sure we touch on student-paced learning. I'm going to take us to Teaching Books in Action, which is where we put in ideas for how you might use teaching books based on what we're learning from how teachers and librarians and everybody who's using the resource, how they're applying it and how we've used it in our own professional work. We have a number of writing prompt ideas. This is a series we recently put out. And I, but where I wanna take us right now is blended learning. And because uh, I'm taking us here because we are talking about student paced instruction. There's two parts to this, so explore whichever you'd like. What I'm taking us to now are particular examples of how you might use it. Because what you will find is two parallel columns. You see some great, uh, one example of how you might use these resources to support teacher led instruction, and then simultaneous to that, 
offer student choice that has wonderfully integrated in student paced learning as well. So use this as a way to kind of spark some inspiration and ideas, but this is really going to give some thoughts and, and direct examples and what you might do for that. And then, like I said, also, when we were looking at our Bitmoji slide deck, these are great to use to encourage students to create their own. And maybe they do it to do those independent reading suggestions, like I said, or they might create their own Bitmoji reading corner, right? Something that can be created by them together and uh, entirely owned on their own. All right. This is a lot of information. And so the last place I want to show you before I show you how to find help <laughs> is our newsletters, because when in doubt, it's nice to kind of have those fresh uh, examples and reminders. And so where you want to find is your toggle menu. Scroll down to your newsletters. This is where you can sign up for the virtual teaching ideas, which is what you can get um those those examples like i showed you we do a, a new set of resources each month and so you will get that directly delivered to you and then you can also find the link to subscribe to the blog so this is a good way to stay informed and get fresh resources regularly sent to you that is what we want to share with you. I'm going to also show us uh, where you can find help because remember, we're always here and we're always happy to help you. If I go to my toggle, show you that again, I go to help. You can find any number of ways to get resources to support you to get in touch with us, whatever helps. So. Thank you so much, Kim. Is there anything else that you think we should add before stopping our recording for today? Um, I'm No, I don't think so. We'll just go ahead and stop and then we can um, continue talking. Okay, great. So everybody, we're going to stay and do Q&A in just a moment. I just want to say thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to present with you and um, we're very excited to continue to learn together. So thanks again. <laughs>